happen. So you, we'll see how it goes with, you know, not as much superior talent around him, but he's still a superior point guard, no questions asked. I'm just going to see how he's going to respond this season with a lot of teams thinking that Golden State is on the bubble as a playoff team. So The Rockets have the most talented backcourt in the NBA with James Harden and Russell Westbrook. Russell was traded from the Oklahoma City Thunder. And you just wonder how it worked with two ball Donovan guards. We asked the same question with him and Chris Paul. Where they both got to have the ball in their hands. And so I kind of discussed that a little bit further going into the podcast. So Denver Nuggets, which is a surprise team last year. They surprised the NBA last year, led by Nikola Jokic. Does this team experience regression in the vastly improved conference? Just West is crazy to say how the West was deep last year. And how much deeper it got this year. Uh, it's going to be a gauntlet in the West. And we'll see if Denver can survive the blows in the Western Conference. Utah Jazz added playmaking and shooting with their offseason pickups. This is one of the deepest teams in the West. Do they pose a threat in the West? Or it's going to be more the same with Utah. Will Donovan Mitchell see growth? Well, he be able to coexist with Mike Conley as the lead guard, as opposed to not having Ricky Rubio anymore. Which I'm not questioning that. That's, that's an upgrade, obviously, but, you know. You got Joe Ingles, who just got his one-year extension, $14 million. They add Bodon Badanovich from the Pacers. Some more shooting there. And, of course, you can't forget the man in the middle, Rudy Gobert, who made this defense a go. Uh, so that's going to affect everything. Portland Trail Blazers had a blazing run. That earned him a trip all the way to the Russian Conference Finals last year. Only to get bulldozed by the Golden State Warriors. <laughs> so, the question is, do we see a motivated Hassan Whiteside, who was traded from the Miami Heat, to here? And a healthy Yusuf Nurich when he comes back to go with this talented backcourt they have and Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum. San Antonio Spurs always overlook, ain't they? This presents the same season as here. But they still have the best coach in Greg Popovich and a young star, Wante Murray, who just signed a four-year contract extension. Should be solid, along with Aldrich, LaMarcus Aldrich, and DeMar DeRozan. But do you worry if DeMar DeRozan contract Extension poses a distraction. This franchise, you want to start getting some of this stuff taken care of. You took care of your young point guard. You believe in him. He's the future. Murray is a solid player. He had an unfortunate injury last year. He came back looking pretty solid during the preseason. So this is stuff going forward with this first team that's always been well coached, well disciplined, stick to the fundamentals. Timmy D is on the sideline as a, as a coach. It's good to see Timmy D, even though he's seems like he's been smoking a lot of weed, been hanging around Dun Dunny Nelson too much. Um, but nonetheless, Tim Duncan has a lot to offer the game as a coach. So that guy speaks, you listen, and so you one of the Spurs that's been pretty good about keeping the outside north outside noises out that they are able to go ahead and. Still make some noise like they always do as a consistent and the team that you expect to be in the postseason. Those are some of the storylines going in from the West. Which team is is it to beat in the West? My pick is going to be the Los Angeles Clippers. You got Kawhi Leonard, who had a fantastic showing in the NBA Finals. They were saying that the mid-range mid-range game was dead. It was on life support. A lot of teams kind of shy away from the mid-range game. Kawhi Leonard lived on it last year. 
He brought it back out of life support. The pick and pop was deadly. The guy could not. Guy was automatic from there, basically. Torching any teams in his way. I say that the mid-range is still a tool that you should be able to use. I encourage with some of these players that can't hit the three-point shot yet. Kevin Garnett did it with the best of them and managed to have a fantastic career. 18-footer, still lethal. You can go ahead and do on the elbow, hit a jumper there. Same thing Kawhi did. Got to his spot, found his little sweet spot. Reminiscent of Jordan when he did that back in the 90s. Find his little sweet spot. Yeah, Jordan could take the three. But if I know I got a higher degree shot, you can't stop me to get to my spot. Take advantage of it. The Clippers also have Paul George. Once you get back from shoulder injury, this is a team with a deep bench, deep talent around. They got uh, the center from the Lakers, Zumbika. I pronounced his name prior wrong. But the guy's real talented. Then you got to add in Montrezl Harrell and Lou Will. This team could be the best perimeter defense in the league. Paul George and Kawhi Leonard are some of the best two-way wings in the NBA. And you put them on the same team with a defensive hound like Patrick Beverly and Doc Rivers who speaks about defense. Did one of the best coaching jobs last year. This team had no business going 48 and 43. Had no business making the playoffs with that roster. And Doc Rivers did a fantastic job with this team. Speaking of the Biggest comeback in playoff history against the Warriors. The Warriors, Goliath, that has Kevin Durant, Klay Thompson, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Steve Curry is their coach, and orchestrated the biggest comeback in playoff history. How? Stevie B, Stevie Ball has done a fantastic job taking over this franchise and get them going in the right direction. Want to give them their own arena. Clipper fans, call call yourself excited. You have a championship window that you need to take advantage of. And your team is a team to beat. You can actually afford to go, go ahead and do load management with some of these players because your team is so deep. Teams don't envy that. All that deep. It's going to be fun to watch. Teams that can something about their durability. It's got to be the Lakers. LeBron just coming off a growing injury last year. He's not this rubber chicken that he was anymore. He's 34. But 34 years old is old in NBA years. Grind of 82-game season. The guy who's seen the playoffs as much as LeBron did. Didn't see it last year. Probably needed the break. You got Anthony Davis who's been injury prone in his career. They was had to do an MRI on his finger in the preseason. Thought he could have been out a little bit longer. Kyle Kuzma, the piece that kept in all the mess of trade in New Orleans and, and getting the move to get Anthony Davis here. He's missing the start of the season due to a foot injury. Death is concerned for the Lakers. So when they lose some of these big power names that they have on this roster here, you go into some names such as Alice Caruso, JaVel McGee, Ray John Rondo, Danny Green, Quinn Cook, Dwight Howard. This is their rotation. Doesn't sound very appeasing. LeBron and Anthony Davis has to play their game. They have to be in the lineup. At least 85% of the time. And they still probably won't be a top three seed team in the East as people are predicting. Top heavy this team is. And LeBron and and Anthony Davis going to make this team go. But when they go down, a lot of questions about this team depth. The most overhyped team in the West. 
I'm going to go with the Houston Rockets. I think they're going to do well in the regular season. I think they're going to be, they're probably going to have the best record in the regular season. <clears throat> that type of basketball works in the regular season. Does it work in the postseason, though? Two ball dominant guards. I know a lot of people criticize, even, even they hear the noise that they know they're getting criticized about this. Might not want to hear this, but this is my opinion. If you want this thing to work, Russell Westbrook needs to handle the ball more than James Harden. He needs to. Harden poses a triple threat. He can slash. Shoot a three. He did this stuff in OKC when Russ was the point guard there. Harden won his boy back on the team. He's got to make that sacrifice. And when it comes to fourth quarter, you out the way. It's James Harden time. It's James Harden time. Four quarters all yours. For the three quarters in the beginning of, of this, let Russ run the show. But when it comes to the fourth quarter and you need buckets, Harden's your guy. Russ is shooting down to 42% and 29% from the three-point line last year. This iso ball in the playoffs just doesn't work. And a lot of fans don't like watching it. But you know what? It's their style. I might not like watching it. But for Harden, it works. MVP off of it. What can you say? I just worry about them, though. They got talent. Then they lost Gerald Green, too, to a foot injury. I don't know. The most overlooked team? It's got to be Portland. Portland Trailblazers. I already spoke about this, about White Sox, new environment for them. He actually clashed with, you know, coaches and management staff over there. I mean, I got Heat fans that can give you a full story on Y side on this podcast. So maybe they need to separate from each other. Nurkic is down for the time being with an injury. So Y side is a starter. Time to build your brand back up, sir. See what you got. Just wonder if Nurkic would help thee. Would the Western Confound be that much different? Nurkic is a bad man at the five. Solid. I mean, see me, they don't think Portland is going to get back to the playoffs. Yeah, they rely on the growth of Zach Collins and Anthony Simons. They got vet pieces like Kent Bazemore. Rodney Hood, Paul Gasol. But I won't count out. They also got their two guard and CJ McCollum. But I'm not counting out Damian Lillard, man. I did it a few times last year and they got me burnt. I'm not counting him out. So, no surprise that me is taking him out to play off again. But you think you will learn from counting this guy out. Just doesn't end well. This guy from Weber State is just fueled by motivation. He always has been. And they they will make the playoffs. I tell you that. I'd be stunned they don't make it. It'd probably be because of injury they don't make it. As I said about the East, the West... You know, I know they do the captains for the All-Star. So, I'm going to go with Anthony Davis, LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, Stephen Curry as your starters out the West. The Western Conference must watch lead pass teams. Go to Utah Jazz. Just interested to see that Mike Conley and Donovan.